All right, good morning, family. How are we feeling this morning? We feeling lovely and we feeling wonderful and alive and well and ready to give glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you know the routine. Before we start, we'd like to just stand and honor God right before we get started with our praise and worship. So if you could do so, please rise to your feet if you're able to. And let's just go before our Heavenly Father. God, we come before you at this time to thank you, Father, for this beautiful morning you have blessed us with. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the strength and the breath of life, Father God, to breathe and to breathe in your presence, Father God, this morning. We want to we be with you this morning, Lord, so be with us right now, Father God. Anoint this service, Lord, that we may have a wonderful time in your presence. We thank you. We give you the glory and honor in your Son, Jesus Christ's name, and all of God's wonderful people say... Hallelujah. We're about to give him glory today, yeah? Turn to your name and say glory. 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 Here we go. We got an oldie but goodies for you today. So put your hands together. Hey, hey, hey. I know it's 8 o'clock and we all just waking up, so you know what? I'm going to wake up too. I'll just push my chair back. Are we ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. When we come into his presence. coffee I had my espresso and now I got my Holy Spirit coffee praise the Lord let's keep it going hey 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 come on if 
you're here at 8 o'clock, that means you, got a, you either got a lot of rest or you got a lot of things to do today. But it's glad to see you over here today worshiping together. Hey, one more time. Hey. Just feel his presence in this place this morning. Hey. Come on, join us. What does it mean? Say right now 
Praise the Lord. Come on, give your, friend, give your neighbor a high five. Just give him a hug. And say, I am ready. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Hold up. Rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. redeemed. Turn to the enemy and say, I am redeemed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah. There's just nothing like breathing in his presence this morning. Amen. This is our opportunity to just surrender to God. Open our hearts and say, Lord, I came here for a reason. So show me, Lord. Show me why I'm here. Show me what I have to know what is it that you want me to hear, Father God, this morning? My heart is open. I'm ready to receive you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Holy forever, yes. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, right now. And we thank you, Father God.
sweetest thing I know. Yes, he's the sweetest thing. Lord, you're the sweetest thing. Five your neighbor one more time and say good morning neighbor it's great to see you this morning as we welcome pastor joe on stage well let's give our worship team a big round of applause i've got joy like fountain i got joy like a fountain Joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. Joy like a fountain. Joy like a fountain. Peace like a river. Peace. I've got peace like a river. Like a river, peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, peace like a river, peace like a river in my soul. Father, no matter what's going on in our nation right now. We thank you for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I lift up the nation that we love. And I pray, Father God, for your healing touch, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that you will do only that which you can do to bring healing in our nation. Father, where our nation is so divided, 
moving so far away from many of the principles that our nation was founded in. And I pray, Lord God, right now, we stand in the gap for our nation. We pray for our state, and we pray, Lord God, that you would declare, Father God, your glory over our nation. And I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, for your hedge of protection and your safety, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, and I lift up our leaders to you, and I pray, Lord God, that you would, Father, keep them in the palm of your, their hands, and that you would, Father, work upon their hearts, Lord God, and draw them unto you. And we thank you, Father God, for the peace of God that rules and reigns in our nation. Because no matter what's happening on the outside of us, Father, what's important is also what's happening on the inside of us. We can't control that which happens on the outside, but we can control that which is in us. And we thank you for the peace of God that rules and reigns in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to read out of uh, Matthew chapter 20 as we continue to go through the book of Matthew. Man, there is actually light at the end of the tunnel that we may be finishing the book of Matthew by the end of the year. As, especially if the pastor, the senior pastor, sticks to it. Matthew 20, 29 to 34 says, As Jesus and the disciples left the town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind. Two blind men were sitting beside the road when, the, when they heard that Jesus was coming that way. They began shouting, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. But they only shouted louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, we want to see. Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. Instantly, they could see. Then they followed him. This is the reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. You may be seated this morning. The title of my message this morning is The King Responded to Faith. The King Responded to Faith. I think this message is going to really resonate with all of us the king responded to faith somebody say faith um, because we are expository students we always got to go back to the authorial tent and we had actually established this in the first time when we were going over the Sermon on the Mount early in the book of Matthew but I felt like we need to reestablish it again so that you understand the, the author's intention. When, you, when I write a letter, if I'm writing a letter to my wife and I'm spending several years away from my wife on, on deployment, uh, like Pastor Carlos has done, right? Um, and I write a letter to my wife and knowing that I miss her and then I'm surrounded by war, but I, I miss my family, I miss Hawaii. How many know that letter, you can't take the letter and take verses out of it and sentences out of it, out of context. You got you to make sure, well, what was Pastor Joel trying to say, right? What was, his, what was his intention in writing his letter? And so Matthew, in writing this letter, we got to go back to, so that you totally understand the context. The book of Matthew is about the Messiah King and his kingdom. If you were to summarize it in one sentence, that's it. It's about the Messiah King and the kingdom. Matthew's intention was to convince the Jewish audience that Jesus is the promised and long-awaited Son of David, Son of Man, and Son of God. Hallelujah. So with that in mind, I, we, we go into our text, um, the context, and understand that Jesus actually, after three and a half years of ministry, he's now about to start his last week on earth. He's about to, 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 he's headed towards Jerusalem and he's about to die. What I love is the, the teaching that, that Ace dropped on us last week, which was a phenomenal message. How many appreciate the fact that no matter who mounts this pulpit, the word of God is going to be preached in the right context? Somebody say amen. And what was even, even more clever about his message was that they were able to to actually use an acrostic, which is actually a word, and you take the word and you have your points match that word, so they use the word map. And basically it gave us a, a, a road map of, of 
you know, serving God. And what is, what is it, how is it, what should be our attitude and what should be uh, our spiritual posture? Somebody say amen. amen. And I love the fact that he touched upon the scripture uh, where the sons of Zebedee's mom was trying to, Salome was trying to manipulate Jesus. Come on, somebody. And I don't blame mamas. Mamas want the best for their kids, right? They want the very best for their kids. So they go, hey, Jesus, you know, I'm, you know my sons, can they like, you know, in your kingdom, can they sit on your left and right? Can they have the authority to be able to be like a prince, to sit next to the king? And I love what uh, Ace was, was challenging us. He says, he says, is this for the glory of God or, or, or the glory of, of yourself? Is this for self-glorification or is this for God glorification? And he exposes the motive. He, he used the word motive and map. Motive. And we need to always check our motive. Whatever we do, we should always check our motive. Somebody say amen. Are we doing it for the right reason? Are we, are we doing this for, for, uh, for glorification? Or are we doing it for the right reason? Somebody say amen. And then, and then Jesus talked about the authority of the people, how rulers on earth, they use it to, to, to uh, manipulate and, you know, order people around. And, and he was basically telling that, that you, you know, if you're in a place of authority, you don't, you don't use your authority for, for self-glorification or to, to serve yourself. Your authority is actually to serve others. Come on, somebody. And he went into the perspective and uh, what I just love about the, the whole message, it was challenging for any of us. I mean, we should all examine our hearts to make sure that our motives are right, that we're doing things for the right reason. You know, well, why, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Is it because you want to be known? Is it because you want to be popular? Right? That's, that's the wrong reason. Is it to glorify God or to bring attention to yourself? Turn to the person next to you. I think the pastor's talking about the person in front of us right now, but we won't, we won't tell him. We won't tell him that, right? But I love that message, and I love the fact he ends with the fact that, that you know, Jesus did not come to be served, right? He did not come to be served. He came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That word serve is the word diakonai, which basically means that, that you're like waiting on tables, that, they, that you're like a slave, that you're waiting for the master's command. And, that, and that's what Jesus was saying, that, that's me. I'm waiting for my dad's command and I'm here to serve my dad and I'm here to serve the people of God. Now, if Jesus has that attitude, how, many more, how much more should we have that attitude? Isn't that the truth? Come on, let's give Pastor a... Uh, or Pastor Ace. Let's give Ace a big round of applause. So appreciate that message. Richie really sets up this next message, which is why we love the book of Matthew, because every text is set up from the text before and text even chapters before. So, so I gave you the authority and intent I gave you the context, I give you the introduction here. Jesus was surrounded by a large crowd of followers, fans, and haters. Leaving Jericho to go to Jerusalem, Jesus' journey was suddenly interrupted by two blind men on the roadside. Jesus stopped and spoke with them and then rewarded them by healing their eyes from blindness. And I want to ask you this question, why did Jesus allow himself to be interrupted? Why did Jesus, think about that, why did Jesus allow himself to be interrupted? Understand, he's in Jericho, it's a town just before you get to Jerusalem. He's on his way to Jerusalem, he's passing through, and it's a, it's a actually 4,000 mile, mile uh, 4,000 feet hike. It's a 15 mile journey from Jericho to Jerusalem. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a I mean, you're 900 feet below sea level at Jericho, and you're going to go to 3,000 plus uh, feet up in Jerusalem. I mean, you know, that's a long, that's a, that's a huge hike. And that's, that's an uphill, that's like walking from the bottom of Makakilo and going all the way up to Haleakala. Come on, somebody. You're going past the top of Makakilo. I mean, that's a Makakilo top is only 1,000 feet. And you got to understand that these guys had to go long ways, 15 miles. Amen. 
So why did Jesus allow himself to be interrupted? Number one, because he saw faith, he heard faith. There's something about faith that Jesus responds to faith. Every healing and miracle that he performed was because somebody stepped out by faith to believe that the Messiah could heal them. Amen? So I'm gonna give you five observations of this text. Faith inspired, faith opposed, faith specified, faith identified, and faith transformed. Number one, faith inspired. So Jesus and his disciples left the town of Jericho, a large crowd, everybody say large crowd. A large crowd following him. Now understand that he had many people interested, not some of them were close, wanted to know Jesus, some were just interested. And some of them were haters of, of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ. But then many of them also were actually on their way to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And so we talked about early in the, in the book of Matthew that there's three different festivals in Jerusalem that all men of Jewish, uh, who are considered themselves Jews, they have to go to Jerusalem and worship. So this is one of the, the festivals, which is the Passover. So many people are on their way to, to, this, uh, to, to Jerusalem. But there's something about uh, cultures. And because my wife and I have been to all over the world and we've experienced many different cultures and have sat down with, with leaders and pastors and, and congregational members and have spoken to them. And, and there's something that I, I realize about culture is that every country, every people group that we've spoken to, there, there's some sort of legends legends and, and folklore that are passed on from generation to generation. There's a reason why many of them believe the way they believe today because of things that happened in the past. And I laugh because that's how exactly how Samoans are too. We have so many legends. Like my mom would tell me, hey, in our village, you have to understand, you cannot whistle over here. You cannot do this over there. You got to understand there are principalities. There's the, there's the, the spirit that, that protects our village that, come on somebody, you guys understand what I'm saying? There's all these different legends. Diff there's these different stories. So you got to understand, in, in, even in Jericho, they, were, they grew up Jewish, Jewish people had legends and folklore of stories that, man, our God split the sea into two. And they walked on dry land. Come on, somebody. Right? They, they had all these legends that God provided as they walked from Egypt to, to Jerusalem. Man, God provided by killing all the, the quail in the air. And they ate birds and chicken for a long time. Come on, somebody. How many of you know if you grow up with that kind of stories constantly going through generation and generation and then all of a sudden they hear, man, you know, there's a coming Messiah. He is the son of man. He's the son of David. He's the son of God. He is coming. And when he comes, he's going to conquer. To fulfill Daniel 7, 13, 14, that there is the son of man that is coming that's going to be given great power and glory and authority. And he's going to have in the, establish the kingdom that will last forever. Somebody say amen. Right? So when you grow up with something like they, these two guys that we're talking about this morning, these two guys may have been blind, but they could still hear. And they were hearing and growing up with these type of stories. And so when they heard that there was this guy down the street, in fact, in Matthew 9, Jesus healed two guys of being blind. And now two blind guys, Jesus is coming to our town. Guess what's happening in their hearts? Hope. There's actually hope. Hope is rising in their hearts. Man, the guy that healed, the guy that is healing people, the lame is walking, the blind sees, the deaf hears. Come on, somebody. The paralytics are walking. They hear this story. Okay, Pastor Joe, set, set it up. They hear about things. How many know it's important to hear stories? Most importantly, even hear the Word of God, yeah. stories from the Bible. Yeah. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the good news about Christ. Hebrews 11, 6, see, this stirs up the faith of people in our faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him, those who diligently 
seek him. Hebrews 11, 1 tells us that faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. There's something about Jesus' coming to Jericho that stirred up the hope in these two blind men. Understand that these two blind men are, were beggars. They were unable to work. They were unable to help themselves. They were totally dependent on other people to help them. So they would go to the, the city gates and they would beg for money so they could eat. These blind men actually represent the fallen man. They represent all of us. We are those blind men. Apart from Christ, we cannot see the things of the Spirit. Apart from Christ, we are diseased. These men were beggars. They were the rejects of society. They were the, they were the floor. They were the dirty floors of the toilet of the community. They were the rejects. And they're a reflection of who we are apart from Christ Jesus. Our sins disqualified us. But the grace of God, everybody said the grace of God. But for the grace of God. But what I love is that hope. Everybody say hope. Faith always begins with hope. Hope rose up in their hearts, and guess what they did? They started to have desires. They had the desire to, you know what? If God can heal, if this is the Messiah, then this is not big. This is not a big ask. This is small for him. For nothing is impossible with Christ Jesus. So truly, I desire to be healed. But you know what? A desire is not enough. How I many of you can do you can have a lot of desires and get nowhere? Never arrive to faith. Because a desire needs to turn into a decision. These men, though they were blind and probably needed assistance to go different places, they, had a, they made a decision that, you know what, we're going to go position ourselves so that when Jesus walks by, we will actually encounter the presence of God. And so they had their desire, they had this hope to turn into desire, and that desire they decided to make a decision. We're going to sit our okole in the place where Jesus is going to walk by. Come on, somebody. I mean, they could have just sat in their house. What would good, what good would that do? Nothing. But they had to position themselves. And I think sometimes we think that, you know, God's going to do that. No, you got to position yourself. You actually do. You got to do some work yourself. Oh, but God's going to do everything. No, God's going to do a lot of things that you cannot do yourself. But God still requires us to do something. That's, that, that's a reflection of our faith. So desire, decision, and then the determination. Oh, you know what? Hey, can you take us to that the side of the road? Oh, sorry, man, I cannot. Oh, shucks. But they were determined. Hey, we need somebody to get us over there. They did not give up. They were determined that they were going to position themselves on the wayside where Jesus was going to walk behind. They were totally determined and devoted to that idea. I love that. I love the fact that when the time finally came, can you imagine that they're nervous? They're like, okay, hey, is Jesus here yet? Is Jesus here yet? No, there's just a lot of people. Man, I only hear, I only hear feet. You know, I just hear people stepping. I hear some people running. But is Jesus here yet? No, 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 not yet. And I can only imagine when the guy finally said, you know what? Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And he could tell by the, the confirmation was the fact that a lot of other people were excited that the, the Messiah was here. And he didn't just say silent. And says, hope. Oh, okay, when he sees us, if it's the will of God, he's going he to call us out. No. His eyes didn't work. But his ears worked, and his mouth works. So he yells out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. I love that. 
See, faith speaks. Faith speaks. Sometimes you get discouraged and you don't want to speak anymore. But faith speaks. Faith opens its mouth. Come on, somebody. Especially when you're down. Especially when you're discouraged and you're depressed. Faith speaks. Faith speaks. Faith also trusts God. He trusted God. All right, I'll let my request be made known. Now we'll see what happens. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. John MacArthur said, Faith is not believing in spite of evidence, but obeying in spite of consequences. Let me ask you this question. Do you still have hope in your heart? Are you taking action? Are you putting faith into action? Turning hope into desire, desire to the decision, decision into determination, determination to devotion? Are you positioning yourself so that you can see the breakthrough that that which you hope to see? Second, faith opposed. Be quiet. <laughs> faith opposed. Be quiet. Salapu. <laughs> Shut up, right? Be quiet, the crowd yelled. But they only shouted louder. <laughs> they only shouted louder. Lord, Son of God, have mercy on us. See, the crowd tried to shut them down. Hey, 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 don't disturb the king. Really? Like, quiet. See, the enemies and haters of our faith will always try to silence us and discourage us from asking, seeking, and knocking. Isn't that the truth? Whenever God puts an assignment upon your heart, the devil will always oppose it. He doesn't want you to fulfill that which God has called you to do. But in the meantime, we're called to ask, seek, and knock. If we're not asking, if we're not seeking, we're not knocking, we're probably not pursuing. We probably tapped out, we probably gave up, we probably said, you know what, yeah, I'm gonna quit. And can I tell you that as a Christian, we're not called to be quitters. We're not called to be backing off and shrinking back from the call of God upon our lives. We're called to be the light we, we sang about being the salt and light in the earth. No matter what people tell you, try to silence you. Do not allow them to silence you. Do not let the intimidating roar of masses drown out the uniqueness of your voice. Be quiet. No, no, no. You be quiet. <laughs> Speak. Faith always speaks. Mark 11 says, Truly I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not down in his heart, but believe what he says will come to pass. It will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask and pray, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Come on, somebody. Speak. Shut up. No, you shut up. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up. No, you shut up. Call on Jesus boldly. Call on Jesus bravely. Call on Jesus loudly. Call on Jesus unashamedly. Call on Jesus. When the crowd says to be quiet, the two blind men shouted louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. See, the greater the resistance, the greater should be our persistence. When there's voices, when voices rise, our voices rise and are lifted even higher. When they get loud, we get louder. When the spirit of darkness raise their voice, we get louder. Amen, somebody. Amen. Let me ask you this question. Has your faith been challenged and opposed? Have you set out to do something early this year and you have had so many oppositions that you have basically given up 
these blind men could have easily given up. They could have easily just said, you know what, you know what, we're the scum of the earth. And they just told us to be quiet. Hey, let's just kind of cower away, tuck our tail in between our legs. Let's walk away. Let's not face any conflict here. Instead, they faced opposition face to face and they conquered it. The two blind men persisted and persevered. Number three, faith specified. You guys getting something out of this? When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called, what do you want me to do for you? When I read this, I laugh, because I'm like, really, Jesus? These two blind men are asking you for mercy, and you're asking them, what do you want? They're like, hello? Now, you got to understand, Jesus probably was thinking that they were probably beggars, right? And they were probably asking for money. Hey, you know, I got rent coming up, and I... I need some money to help pay for the rent. Um, you know, but he wanted to, them to be specific. And not only that, he wanted them to actually uh, 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 let it come out of their mouths. Because there's something about the power of our words. When it comes out of our mouth and when we hear. He wanted them to hear, I believe. Jesus heard them. Jesus heard them. I like the fact it starts at verse 32. When Jesus heard them. That is, a, that is huge. These blind men, the, the rejects of their community, and yet Jesus heard them. He could have heard a thousand people there. There were thousands of people on the road, but he heard them. Sometimes you may feel that, man, you know, there's so many different requests going up. God too busy to hear my request. No, he's never too busy to hear requests. All he wants to see is faith. All he wants you to see, he wants to see if you're going to step out and believe. And you're going to trust in God that God is able to do that which he said he's going to do. The king of kings stopped to address these two men. He not only spoke and he not only uh, heard them, but the Bible said he actually stopped. The fact that there was a flow of people walking. Come on, somebody. How I many of those are you walking out of the stadium and, and there's a flow you don't want nobody to stop in front of you because you're going to trample over. And yet Jesus didn't care because this is how much he cared for these guys was that he stopped in his tracks. He stopped. That's huge. And yet sometimes we don't think that God will stop for us. He's too busy doing things. He's got more important things to, to do than to be with me. No. Be specific. Everybody say, be specific. In your prayer life, and this is one of the things that this text has challenged me. Say, Joe, ask big. Because God is not intimidated by your dreams. God is not intimidated by your consequences or, or your circumstances. So ask big. Because he's a big God. Somebody say amen. Ask big because he's a big God. Let, he's not intimidated by your desires and and your dreams. Fourth, faith identified. Verse 33, Lord, they said, we want to see. Like a hungry man, he doesn't care about money. All he wants is food. Right? A guy who needs to, a lame, a paralytic, he doesn't care about anything except the fact that he wants to walk. This guy who was blind, these two guys who were blind, one of them, according to Mark and Luke, his name was Bartimaeus. I think the other guy's name was Junior Boy. <laughs> think so, maybe. Maybe Shoni or something like that. But the fact that they were able to verbalize and identify what they actually wanted. Why were they brave enough to ask? Because they said, if this is the Son of God, if all the stories that we have heard that has been passed on from generation to generation, if this is Him, then asking for my eyesight is nothing to Him. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can dare ask or imagine. We want to see 
I want to ask you, what do you want Jesus to do, do Jesus to do for you? What do you need for him to do for you? It might be something in your marriage, it might be something with your children. It might be something with your job. It might be with your finances. It might be with your business. I don't know what it is, but there's nothing too big for him. All we need to do is ask. All we need to do is keep seeking. All we need to do is keep knocking and never give up. Lord, we want to see. Lord, we want to see. Lord, we want to see. That resonates in my heart because I know that there's things that I'd like to see happen. The Lord says, well, ask, seek, not believe. I am he who the scriptures promise. Matthew 7, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Your parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you're, you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask them? Our God is a good God. <laughs> He's a good Father. Whether it's your health, your marriage, your children, your, your finances, your business, your job, keep knocking. Keep seeking. Finally, the last point, faith transformed. Jesus felt sorry for them or com felt compassion for them and touched their eyes instantly everybody say instantly instantly they could see then they followed him i love that they not only received the healing but then they followed you know it's so unfortunate that many times we find ourselves in a difficult place in our lives and so we start coming to church and we find god and when you find god you see the blessing of god flow and now along, no longer, so trust me, I've seen this over and over and over and over again. People in desperate, desperate situation, they find God, God does great things in their lives, and all of a sudden, they lose God. <laughs> they, they lose their faith in God, or they, go, they, get, they get distracted. But the Bible said that when they, got, they could see, they actually followed Jesus 15 miles uphill. I mean, I, I don't care where Jesus would go. If he healed my eyes and I needed to be, and I was blind, I will follow him to the ends of the earth. Understand? I would follow him to the ends of the earth. What is 4,000 miles, 4,000 feet hike? He followed him. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound save the wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see like the two blind men who see their sight may our hearts get inspired and encouraged by the hope we have in our living and all powerful God may our praise and prayers reflect the sound of faith that pleases our King to him be the glory forever and ever Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but. Praise God. Praise.
Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the word of God, church. Before we get to talking about what's in your pocket, how many of you appreciated that word this morning? There is nothing more that I could say about anything else when I'm up here to talk about when he just preached everything you needed to know. It's all on faith. So when it comes to your tithes and offering, it's an act of faith. That you're trusting in God with what you have. You're trusting in God what you're giving to him. Knowing that he's going to do something for you. But you're not just giving out of a habit of giving. If you are, don't give. But when you are trusting in him. When you are having that faith that he will move mountains for you. If you give to him whatever you have, he will move things for you. So when it comes to your tithes and offering, have faith. Have faith in what you give to him. Have faith that he will do miracles for you when you decide to give to him. Not just the money. No. Your time, your gifts, and your talents. Give all those things to God. And have faith. Because when He, the Bible says, when you have faith, you, when you are faithful with the small things, he will bless you with more. But he can't bless you with more if, first of all, you can't handle the small things. So put your faith in God. Trust in him that he would move mountains for you and he would do things for you by giving. Give to God what he deserves. Give to God more than he deserves. But give with an open heart so that way it's honest. Because when it's not, I'm always up here to tell you don't give. Don't give to God if your heart ain't in. It's a waste of your time and a waste of God's. But when you decide to give openly, he promises to bless you. Father God, we ask you that you bless those who decide to give their offerings to you, Father God, their tithes. Father, those who have voluntarily given you their time, their gifts, and their talents, we give them all to you, Father. And we ask that you bless them. We ask that you anoint them. We ask you, Father God, that you continue to rain your blessings upon each one of them so that it will flow over to those around them. Father, we know that you keep your word and we trust in your word. And we ask that you bless, and you bless, and you bless those who give freely in your name. In your name we pray. Everybody say. Now before I pass the mic over to our pastor, our executive pastor, this is one of those privileges that was given to me today. So it is an honor and a privilege for me to wish pastor happy birthday. That was on Tuesday. So everybody, we know what to say. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Carlos. Happy birthday to you. We ask Pastor Carlos, please rise. Hey, Pastor, if you don't mind, I'm just going to do a quick prayer. We turn it over to you. Everybody, stretch your hands out forward. To this mighty man of God, Father God, we put before you Pastor Carlos. And you know your plans that you have for him. Father, you have seen his plans from the start to where he is now. And you have prepped him. You have primed him. And Father God, he has been running for you. So we ask, Father God, that you continue your anointing upon Pastor Carlos. You continue your will upon him. Let him speak your word truthfully and honestly. And most of all, Father God, you have greater plans. And whatever your plans in, in his life, let it come forth continue to anoint him continue to bless him and let your will continue to be done in his life in your name we pray everybody say <laughs> Karina you let me down we're gonna talk Sid Junior <laughs> thank you Ace thank you church 
I forgot what I was about to say. I mean, y'all just bamboozled. I don't, you know how I am about surprises. How many people enjoyed that message from the day? Wasn't that great? Very timely, right? We got to have faith. And the reason why Jesus asked him, what do you want? See, sometimes we don't, we don't think of that because we look at it as being mean. What, 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 what do you want? See, Jesus needs you and I to understand where we are at that moment. So later on, we can tell people where I was when Jesus changed my life forever. So he will ask you, what do you need? What do you want? Your response should be, Father, change my life. Turn my heart to you and grow me into being who it is that you have called me to be. We need that. We need to hear that in a society that we live in today. And I'm glad Pastor started this off with praying for our nation. We need prayer. I will always tell you I'm, I'm proud of who I am. And I'm not just, I mean, we got combat veterans here. But see, the difference is less than 1% of the United States go to the military. In that, less than 10% of them are actually fighting forces. And out of that, less than 40% of us actually fight battles. I am a decorated combat veteran who fought for this country. And we need to stand proudly. And I will tell you right now, I believe in MAGA. Make America godly again. That's what it's all about. We have lost the love for our Heavenly Father. We should never, as church people, we're supposed to be the salt and light of this world. We are never to look at other people and wonder what their political stance is. Do you have eternal life with the Heavenly Father? That's all we should be concerned about. That's it. Be salt. Be light. Be different. And I'm afraid that the church today is no different than the world. Be mindful of what you say. Because the person you're talking about is a person too. They're a child of God. Right? Love people. That's what Jesus called us to do. Love people. Love people. When you and I leave out here, Take that word that was just sown. Have faith that God can move mountains. He can change hearts. He can turn things around. But you and I got to do our part. Amen? We always got to remember that. Do your part and things will be different. I'm sorry. Ace threw me for a loop. Y'all surprised me. And then they tried to do crazy stuff yesterday. And I'm like, this is the country that I put my life on the line for. This is ridiculous. So I swear I'm going to punch people in the face. Just don't be in the line of it. I got notes I'm supposed to talk about. Clean up. Last week I think I was drunk. Um, not realizing how many Saturdays we had this month. But clean, clean up is on the 27th of July. Let's come and show love to the community, amen? If you got lawn supplies, weed whackers, rakes, trash bags, two arms, two legs, a truck, come on out. Help us out so we can take care of the community that we supposed to be serving amen and then we have a church picnic now you know my philosophy if i see you at the picnic 
and you wasn't at church. You see, it starts with church picnic. Come to church, go to picnic. Right? That's on the 4th. Um, see, Anna and Victoria, Fred didn't fire you. See, <laughs> see Anna and Victoria for information and about what you're going to bring. Right? Don't come and say, well, where's it going to be at? And how much food they're going to have so I can eat? No. What you going to contribute to this process? Amen? So make sure to see them about that. And on the 9th of August, we have, at 7 p.m., we have a women's event. So, ladies, let's get ready. Sign up. Be present. Come and grow in God and do the things that God has called each and every last one of you to do. Amen? Other than that, you know, we have connect groups. Connect groups are not Bible study. They, they are connect groups. You go to your connect group and you unpack and process. Watch this. What this message said to you, right? This is what we want to do. We want to grow our connect groups. So if you look at your app, if you look at the notes that you just had right in the bottom, see, we want to make sure you don't miss out. There's a tab that says um, that you can click on to, to, to start the serve, right? There's also a tab that you can click on if you want to join the connect group. We want to make it easy for you. If you want to start a connect group that do things destiny way, then we want to connect with you as well. We want to grow groups because we want to grow people in God. Amen? So let's get involved with our church. This is our church. This is the house that God gave us. Let's make it good and let's continue to invite and love upon people and tell them the goodness of God, right? I guarantee you, them two blind men, they happy as all outdoors. Why? Because they didn't care what nobody else had to say. See, at the end of the day, you and I got to drown out the negativity. We got to drown out all of the stupid things so that we can be focused on God, right? That's how we make it to that narrow road. And I don't know about you, but I want to sing praises with my Heavenly Father for the rest of my life. Amen? Let's stand to our feet so we can get out of here. Let's give Pastor Joe another hand for that word. Wasn't that great? I mean, that was great. He keep on, he's going to get an A in class. <laughs> I mean, listen, just to learn and to grow in God's word, the only thing you got to do is come here and pay attention. And you got to grow in something. You got to hear something that's going to stick with you, right? No, if you leave out here and say, I ain't learned nothing, don't come back. You ain't putting your heart into it. You ain't opening yourself up so God can speak to you through whomever is there. This was a great message. We need it. And trust me, he had not did his message before everything else. We needed this. You got to have faith. And it's just not some word that we say, oh, I got faith. I got faith, Pastor. Sure. But you got to exercise it. Live it out. Work that muscle. Amen. Father, we just thank you. Such an awesome time. Such a powerful message about faith. Reassurance of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Father, I thank you that the hope in the hearts and the minds of everybody here grows stronger and stronger knowing that you are God you're large and in charge. No matter what we see, you're coming to get us. You will rescue us from this situation. Only thing we got to do is stay true and stay faithful to you. So now that we've been equipped and now that we've been inspired, we want to walk out here and live a victorious life, not because of us, but solely because of you. And we give you and only you all of the praises, all of the honor, and all of the glory that only you so rightfully deserve in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus, the church in agreement say, go in peace. We'll see you next week.